Every time I upload a video recording, I try to keep up with the comments and reply to those that need replies for at least two or three days. For the most part, the comments are from people who are expressing their agreement with what I have to say. Obviously, there are a few who disagree with me, and I welcome their comments, as long as they do it civilly. But every now and then, I get a comment that stands out and makes me think. Today, I would like to discuss one specific comment that stood out to me. This comment was posted after my last recording was uploaded. In the recording, I made reference to us being in the end game, and the commenter made the point that I had claimed many times already that we were in the end game. Basically, I had cried wolf many times already. I thought this was worth dedicating a whole recording to, so here goes. I guess before I can carry on, we need to define what the end game really is. To me, the end game is a process that gets set in motion and basically leads to final collapse or failure. That would be my definition anyway. Yours may vary. So here is my reply to that commenter regarding his comment. Yes, it is true that I have been saying all along, and I guess many times, that we are in the end game, although I have not used the exact words end game much, if at all, in the past. The reason for this is because I am of the opinion that we have been in the end game ever since the day Nelson Mandela took office. The day the ANC came into power, the rot began, and the end game was set into motion. As per my definition of the end game, a process was set into motion where the general situation in the country started to decay and has not stopped or slowed down for the last 27 years. In fact, the decay has escalated exponentially from day one. What that means is that the rot started slowly, so slowly that few realized it, but with everything that grows exponentially. The speed at which it progresses keeps accelerating, so that the curve of progression looks something like this. The curve keeps getting steeper, but the rate at which it gets steeper also increases. So for a long time, while the rot had already started, many people adjusted a little at a time, which was enough for them not to have their lives affected too much, so the party continued. For the first few years, not many people's lives were affected, and the number of people who were actually affected were almost too insignificant to be taken into consideration. We did nothing about it because, well, there was nothing to be worried about, right? But as with everything exponential, the problem soon became apparent. I don't know how many of you know the old tale of the serf who challenged the king of India to a game of chess, and as a prize, should he beat the king, the king was to give the serf the sum of the grains of rice on the chessboard if the king put one grain on the first square, two grains on the second square, four grains on the third square, eight grains on the fourth square, and so on, until the 64th square. The king agreed at once and the game started. The king ended up losing to the serf, and when it was time to pay the serf his reward, he summons one of his servants to bring him a bag of rice, and he proceeded to put grains of rice on the chessboard. One, then two, then four, then eight, then sixteen, then thirty-two, etc., etc. Even when he had to put down 128 grains on the eighth square, the king still laughed at the serf, ridiculing him for demanding such a small reward. Unfortunately, he soon learned the secret of exponential growth, because by the 20th square, he already had to put down 1 million grains of rice, and by the 40th square, that figure had ballooned to 1 billion grains. By the last, or the 64th square, the figure had grown to the number 18, with 18 zeros behind it. That amount of rice would weigh thousands and thousands of tons. So as you can see from the illustration, Exponential growth at first is nothing to take notice of, but it soon explodes into something uncontrollable. This is exactly what has happened in the case of South Africa. For the last 15 years at least, the curve has been pretty flat and we had to make very small adjustments to compensate. But over the last five years or so, the curve has, as we say, gone exponential. Now the numbers of people who are being affected by the situation here are no longer too small to be noticed. The number of people falling into abject poverty every day is increasing exponentially. The number of people falling victim to crime is increasing exponentially. In fact, everything negative is increasing exponentially now and is unmistakable. Yet, there is still a group, although a rapidly shrinking group, that still think that they are and will continue to be insulated against this. Well, I have news for you, whoever you are. It makes no difference how wealthy you are, no difference how big and secure your house is. No difference how many security guards are standing at the entrance to your complex day and night. Believe you me, your turn is coming. So to that commenter, yes, 
I have been saying for a long time that the beginning of the end or the end game has started many times. The only problem is that I have been speaking about the same end game all along. There is only one end game and it will end for all of us unless we stand up, unite and do something about it like yesterday because it is almost too late already. There is already almost too little left to salvage and way too many whites have already lost their lives. So the longer we sit on our hands denying that the end game is called the end game because it in fact does have an end. Unfortunately, the end has come for too many of us already. Wake up, stand up and put up a fight before the end comes to you and your children too. Please like and share this on as many social media platforms as possible. It's the only way that my message gets out there. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, do it now. You have absolutely nothing to lose. If you would like to contribute to my channel, in the description field I have provided ways in which local as well as international listeners can make a contribution. If you would like to make a crypto contribution, also in the description field I have provided a Bitcoin as well as an Ethereum wallet address. If you would like to contribute any other crypto, simply send me an email to the address in the description field and I will supply you with a relevant wallet address. I also have a Zapper account, so if you would like to contribute via Zapper, simply pause the video whenever you see the Zapper code and scan it. Any and all contributions will be very much appreciated. To all the amazing people who do contribute to my channel, I say a huge thank you. I appreciate it very much. Be safe out there. Until next time.